In every age, there have been travelers and explorers. Fahian, Hyun Seng, Al Beruni, Marco Polo, Ibn Battuta, and Columbus. But very little is known of Sri Guru Nanak Dev Ji as one of the great travelers of the world. It is believed that Sri Guru Nanak Dev Ji is the second most traveled person in the world after Ibn Battuta. He traveled more than 28,000 kilometers in five major journeys from 1500 to 1524. Most of his journeys were made on foot with his companion Bhai Mardana. He covered most of India, present-day Bangladesh, Pakistan, Tibet, Nepal, Bhutan, Southwest China, Afghanistan, Iran, Iraq, Saudi Arabia, Egypt, Israel, Jordan, Syria, Kazakhstan, Turkmenistan, Uzbekistan, Tajikistan, and Kyrgyzstan. This film is an attempt to describe the travels of Sri Guru Nanak Dev Ji in India and various countries and continents, so that the world may know of him as a great traveler, a great missionary, and a great teacher. Guruji undertook five missionary journeys or udasis to spread the word of Gurbani. Sri Guru Nanak Dev Ji was born in 1469 in the village of Rao Bhoidi Talwandi, now called Nankana Sahib, 40 miles from Lahore in present-day Pakistan. His father was Kalyan Das Mehta or Kalu Mehta and his mother was Mata Tripta. From an early age, Guru Nanak showed particular interest in spiritual matters. He developed distaste for the superficial aspects of religious practices, questioning their efficacy and value in achieving God-realization. For some time, he worked as a storekeeper in the state granary of Daulat Khan Lodi, where he came into contact with a Muslim Rabab player, Mardana. When he was 28 years, he suddenly disappeared and returned after three days, declaring himself to be neither a Hindu nor a Muslim. He began preaching that there was only one God, who could be worshipped by any name and reached directly by anyone through abiding faith and devotion. The best way to reach him was through Nam Simran or constant chanting of his name. Sri Guru Nanak Dev Ji set out in 1499 on his mission for the regeneration of humanity on this earth. For one year, he spread his message of peace, compassion, righteousness, and truth to the people in and around his home in Punjab. In 1500, he embarked on his divine mission. His travels are called Udasis. Udasi meant a prolonged absence from home, meaning thereby living a life full of difficulties. His first Udasi was from 1500 to 1506 and covered Sultanpur, Makhdumpur in Multan, Panipat, Delhi, Varanasi, Nanak Mata in Nainital, Tanda Vanjara in Rampur, Kamrup in Assam, Aminabad in Pakistan, Pasroor and Sialkot. Sri Guru Nanak Dev Ji was then just 31. His first stop was at Saidpur now Aminabad in Pakistan. There he met a poor carpenter, Lalo, and chose to stay with him as his guest. The news reached corrupt chieftain of the village, Malik Bhago. He hosted a big feast and invited all holy men, including Sri Guru Nanak Dev Ji, and requested him to grace his residence. Sri Guru Nanak Dev Ji asked for a loaf of bread from Lalo's house. In one hand, the Guruji held Lalo's bread and in the other, that of Malik Bhago's. And when he squeezed both, milk came out from Lalo's bread and blood dripped from Malik Bhago's bread. I cannot eat your food because your bread has been baked with money sucked from the poor through unfair means. While Lalo's bread is from his hard-earned money. Malik Bhago was completely shaken by his guilt and asked for forgiveness. Sri Guru Nanak Dev Ji asked him to distribute his ill-gotten wealth among the poor and live an honest life. 
श्री गुरु नानक देव जी नेक्स्ट वेंट टू तुलुम्बा नाउ मखदूमपुर इन वेस्ट पाकिस्तान एंड मेट सज्जन ठग हु ऑलवेज वोर अ वाइट ड्रेस एंड डिस्प्लेड हिज रोजरी पोजिंग टू बी अ होली मैन He had built a Hindu temple and a Muslim mosque at the courtyard of his residence. He would invite pilgrims to his residence to rest for the night, and at night he would rob them and sometimes kill them too. Shri Guru Nanak Dev Ji stayed with him for a night. Guru Ji did not go to bed early, which made Sajjan nervous. Sajjan asked the Guru Ji to take rest and sleep. But Sri Guru Nanak Dev Ji replied, "God's minstrel does not go to sleep till God sends word to retire." Guru Ji asked Mardana to play the rabab, and he sang the following shabad. <laughs> सजन से नाल में चल दिया नाल चल जिथे लेखा मंगिए सज्जन रियलाइज दैट गुरु जीज हिम वॉज एक्चुअली अड्रेस्ड टू हिम He fell at Sri Guru Nanak Dev Ji's feet to pardon his sins. Guru Nanak Dev Ji said, "Sajjan, in the sovereignty of God, grace is obtained by two things: open confession and reparation for wrong. Please give your ill-gotten wealth to the poor." He obeyed and became a follower of Sri Guru Nanak Dev Ji. It is said that the first historical gurudwara was constructed on the spot where this conversation was held. Shri Guru Nanak Dev Ji's next halt was at Haridwar on the banks of River Ganges and one of the most prominent places for Hindu pilgrimage. It was Baisakhi day and pilgrims were offering water of River Ganges towards the sun. When Shri Guru Nanak Dev Ji asked them As to what they were doing, they replied, "We are offering water to our dead ancestors to quench their thirst." Upon this, Sri Guru Nanak Dev Ji started offering water towards the west. The pilgrims laughed and asked what he was doing. Guru Ji replied, "I am watering my fields in my village in Punjab." They asked, "That how can water reach such a distance?" <laughs> Sri Guru Nanak Dev Ji retorted. If the water cannot reach my fields which are just 400 miles away from here then how can your water reach your ancestors who are not even on earth Shri Guru Nanak Dev ji preached against superstitions and false rituals and idol worship Kaura Bhil was once a cannibal who became a sick after an encounter with Shri Guru Nanak Dev ji that changed his life Shri Guru Nanak Dev Ji then went on to Jagannath Puri in Orissa. It was the anniversary of installation of the idol of Lord Krishna. When Shri Guru Nanak Dev Ji reached the temple, it was evening time. And then all stood to offer the salver to their enshrined idol god. The ceremony was called Aarti, hymns of dedication. The head priest invited Shri Guru Nanak Dev Ji to join in God's worship. Guru Ji refused, which enraged the priests. On being asked the reason, Shri Guru Nanak Dev Ji explained that a wonderful serenade was being sung by nature before the invisible altar of God. Shri Guru Nanak Dev Ji raised his eyes to the heaven and uttered the following shabad of aarti. Gagan mein thal rab chand di Oh, my.
Shri Guru Nanak Dev Ji ended his first Udasi with the visit to Puri and returned to Punjab in 1506. At age 37, Shri Guru Nanak Dev Ji left for his second Udasi. It lasted seven years, from 1506 to 1513, and covered Andhra Pradesh, Tamil Nadu, Sri Lanka, Karnataka, and Kerala. Maharashtra, Madhya Pradesh, Gujarat and Rajasthan. Worship of Shiva's idol was very common in southern India at that time. There were 12 Shivling temples and 6 of them were in South India. Southern India was ridden with caste system too. Shri Guru Nanak Dev Ji visited all such places to show the people to worship the Almighty, the formless. Shri Guru Nanak Dev Ji criticized caste and gender inequalities, idol worship and many other practices which he believed were superstitious and not conducive to liberation. Shri Guru Nanak Dev Ji thereafter visited Bhagat Namdev's temple in Maharashtra from where he collected rhymes written by Bhagat Namdev. Guru Sahib also visited shrine of Bhagat Pipa where he told people all about Bhagat Pipa and collected one of his hymns from there he reached Barsi which was the native place of Sant Trilochan whose two shabads are also included in Shri Guru Granth Sahib ji Shri Guru Nanak Dev ji went to Sangla Dweep or Ceylon or Sri Lanka Batikolova was the first place of his stay in Sri Lanka Raja Shiv Nab was the ruler and was informed that a holy man with a rare spiritual aura had arrived in the old neglected garden and as soon as he set foot in the garden the withered trees sprouted into green foliage Raja Nab devised a plan to test Guru ji before he could bow his head to him the raja sent beautiful girls to seduce Guru ji with their beauty and charm The moment the girls set eyes on Shri Guru Nanak Dev ji they forgot all about their wicked plans and sat down in utter devotion when the king learned about their submission to the guru he rushed to Shri Guru Nanak Dev ji and fell at his feet guru ji placed his hands on his head and blessed him a dharmshala or a religious common place was built where Shri Guru Nanak Dev ji held daily religious congregations and preached his divine doctrine Shri Guru Nanak Dev ji then went to Nanak Jhira on the outskirts of the Bidar town there used to be acute shortage of drinking water in Bidar all efforts of the people to dig wells were of no avail Shri Guru Nanak Dev ji was greatly moved by the miserable condition of the people with divine name on his lips and the mercy in his heart He touched the hillside with his toe and removed some rubble from the place to the utter surprise of all a fountain of sweet cool water gushed out of the hillside the place came to be known as Nanak Jhira After 8 years and covering more than 6000 miles on foot Shri Guru Nanak Dev ji returned back home At the age of 45, Shri Guru Nanak Dev ji undertook his third udasi, which lasted about 5 years, from 1514 to 1518. He travelled to Kashmir, Sumer Parbat, Nepal, Tashkent, Sikkim, Tibet. Shri Guru Nanak Dev ji's first halt was at Mattan in Kashmir. At Srinagar, Guru Nanak ji met a Muslim darvesh, Kamal, and a Hindu pandit, Brahmadas. Brahmadas was a very arrogant person. Wherever he went, he was followed by three camels carrying the ancient books 
he had studied. Guruji, on seeing him coming with huge stock of books, recited the following couplet. The Guru explained, pride darkens man's vision. Ego is the greatest barrier. And unless a man gets rid of it, he cannot grasp the truth. And there can be no peace of mind. Brahmadas got the blessing and became Guru's disciple. 60 kilometers from Srinagar, Mattan Sahib, a Gurudwara in memory of Guru Nanak Dev Ji was built at Mattan. Shri Guru Nanak Dev Ji then travelled towards Tibet. When he arrived at Lake Mansarovar, he met yogis who had found shelter in faraway caves in the mountains. Guru Nanak chided them for running away from the hard realities of life. The Chopta Valley is at an altitude of 13,200 feet. Situated past the Chopta Valley, Dongmar is a lake at a height of 18,000 feet. Lake Dongmar remained frozen during most of the year and rendered it incapable as a source of water. The local people approached Guruji with an appeal for help. Guru Nanak Dev Ji is said to have touched the lake and it has never frozen since. Guru Nanak's footprints, a robe and a water-carrying utensil are preserved in a nearby place called Lachen Gumpha. Here the locals refer to Guruji as Rinpoche Nanak or Nanak Lama. Udham Nagar was the abode of the devotees of Guru Goraknath and it was called Gorak Mata. The yogis who lived here did not want the local people to become learned enough to challenge their superiority. Sri Guru Nanak Dev Ji reached this place and sat for meditation under a people tree. The yogis were surprised to see him. They all gathered together and came to Guruji for a religious discussion. Guruji taught the yogis the path of true meditation and salvation. This place then came to be known as Nanak Mata and became a major centre of the Udasi sect. The third Udasi lasted for five years and Sri Guru Nanak Dev Ji and Bhai Mardana returned back home in Punjab. The fourth Udasi was from 1519 to 1521 and lasted about three years. He covered Multan, Lakhpat, Karachi, Addan, Jeddah, Mecca, Medina, Baghdad, Karbala, Tehran, Bukhara, Samarkand, Tashkent, Kandahar, Kabul, Hassan Abdal. Sri Guru Nanak Dev Ji was then 50 years old. Sri Guru Nanak Dev Ji reached Pak Patan Ajodhan, where he met with Sheikh Brahm, who was the 11th in succession to Baba Sheikh Farid, whose Bani is also included in Sri Guru Granth Sahib. Guruji had a wide range of discussion with Sheikh Brahm, and he stated, There is one Lord and one way. Adopt one and reject the other. On hearing this, the Sheikh raised his hand in amazement and said, Well done, O Nanak. There is no difference between God and thee. Kindly bless me, so that I too may be on good terms with him. The Guru replied, Sheikh Brahm, God will cause thy ship to arrive safe. Guruji blessed him with salvation. Next he went to Lakhpat. Lakhpat is about 20 kilometers from Korini village where there is a Gurudwara in memory of the visit by Sri Guru Nanak Dev Ji. From Lakhpat, Guruji crossed to Somiani port in Sindh where he caught a boat loaded with pilgrims headed west to the Red Sea and Jeddah. Then he travelled on foot to Mecca. When Guruji was resting at Mecca, 
a Malvi or priest came to him, running and with raging anger, and said, How dare you dishonor God's place by pointing your feet towards him? Turn your feet away from the Kaaba and sit properly. Babaji said, Why talk in so much anger for what I have done? After saying this, Babaji started to move his feet, and wherever he moved his feet, Kaaba Sharif's door moved in that direction. The priest, after seeing such a miracle, was surprised. He kissed Guru Nanak's hands and sought forgiveness. Sri Guru Nanak Dev Ji got up and said, Don't you see that God resides in every direction? He dwells in every place, in every heart. At Mecca, Sri Guru Nanak Dev Ji also held religious discussions with Muslim scholars. The Qazis and the Mullahs asked him, Who is superior, Hindu or Musliman? Sri Guru Nanak Dev Ji answered, O oh, Hajis, without performance of good deeds, both Hindu and Muslims will lament. All are equal in the eyes of God. From Mecca, Sri Guru Nanak Dev Ji went to Medina. Next, supposedly, he went to Turkey and thereafter to Greece and then on to Baghdad in Iraq. Even today, there are several disciples of Sri Guru Nanak Dev Ji in Iraq. There is also Sri Guru Nanak Dev Ji's shrine in Baghdad. On the 23rd of November 1969, his followers celebrated his 500th birthday by erecting a memorial at his tomb. From Baghdad, Sri Guru Nanak Dev Ji went to Hassan Abdal, now known as Panja Sahib, and sat at the foot of the hill. Sri Guru Nanak Dev Ji and Bhai Mardana started reciting Kirtan. On the top of a hill nearby, where there was a fresh water spring, lived a Muslim priest, Bawa Wali Kandhari. Water from that spring flowed down to the town and was used by the people for all their needs. Wali Kandhari was an arrogant person who gave the water only to his followers and punished the non-believers. When Wali saw people gathering around Sri Guru Nanak Dev Ji, he stopped the spring water from flowing down to the town. The people became frustrated and went to Guruji. Sri Guru Nanak Dev Ji said, Don't lose your heart. Trust in God. He will not let you die of thirst. Guruji then requested Bhai Mardana to go and appeal to Baba Wali Kandhari and request him to let the water flow down to the town. As soon as Bhai Mardana got to the top of the hill, Baba Wali Kandhari began shouting angrily, Go back to your Guru and ask him to give water to the people. I will not give you any water. Sri Guru Nanak Dev Ji said, Don't lose your heart. God is great and merciful. He can make springs flow from wherever He likes. Let us all pray to Him. Then Sri Guru Nanak Dev Ji lifted a stone under His feet. At once, a small trickle of cool, clean water began to flow from the place where the Guru had lifted the stone. At the same time, Bawa Wali Kandhari's spring began to dry up. He was red with rage. In this crazy state of his mind, he pushed a large rock from the top of the hill towards Sri Guru Nanak Dev Ji. Guru Ji quietly and calmly raised his hand and the rock stopped at the instant it touched the Guru Ji's hand. The Guru's hand got imprinted on the rock. Wali Kandhari could not believe how such a huge rock could have been stopped. He realized that the Guru was a person of God and that God himself had protected his devotee. He quickly came down and fell at the Guruji's feet. The Guru said to him, Rise, my friend. Live as lovers of God should live. Be kind to all. The rock with the imprint of the Guru's palm still exists. There is a beautiful Gurudwara at that place called the Panja Sahib. Panja means handprint. Sri Guru Nanak Dev Ji proceeded a second time to Aminabad. From Aminabad, Sri Guru Nanak Dev Ji returned to Kartarpur after having covered a distance of about 12,000 kilometers in his fourth Udasi or journey. Sri Guru Nanak Dev Ji's fifth Udasi was from 1523 to 1524 and was undertaken within the Punjab province. 
Although Sri Guru Nanak Dev Ji had settled down at Kartarpur, he still took small tours within the radius of 100 to 200 miles around Kartarpur to preach his gospel of Nam. About 25 miles from Kartarpur, there was a place called Achal Batala, where on the occasion of Shivratri festival, hundreds of jogis used to come to take part in the festival. The Guru also went to Achal Batala to preach his doctrine. Jogi Bhangarnath asked Sri Guru Nanak Dev Ji that he exhibited miracles to the world. And why was he showing it to them? Sri Guru Nanak Dev Ji replied that he had no miracles except the true name. The yogis complimented Sri Guru Nanak Dev Ji. Hail, O Nanak! Great are thy deeds. Thou hast lit a light in this age of falsehood in the world. Sri Guru Nanak Dev Ji acquired farmland on the banks of River Ravi in central Punjab. A small community of followers gathered around him and began practicing the new creed he preached. He began composing hymns of great beauty in Gurumukhi, which became part of the Adi Granth, the original scripture. Sri Guru Nanak Dev Ji initiated Kirtan at the early hours of the morning at Kartarpur. After institutionalizing the office of Guru and anointing Guru Angad as his successor, Sri Guru Nanak Dev Ji passed away at the age of 70 at Kartarpur. In the creation of God, human beings occupy the highest position. All human beings are created equal and endowed with the same potential to achieve mukti or liberation, which is freedom from the cycle of births and deaths and attain union with the God. What prevents human beings from achieving it is their homai or ego which can be overcome by cultivating love for God, which is possible only through constant remembrance of the names of God, Nam Simran, Good Deeds, Kirat, Charity, Vand Chakna, and overcoming the five vices, Lust, Greed, Attachment, Anger, and Pride. Sri Guru Nanak Dev Ji taught that if God was to be found, He would be found in the inner chambers of human heart. He laid emphasis on inner virtue and adherence to truth, sincerity and honesty in devotion to God. Without these, man is devoid of any hope to earn the grace of God. Then, 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 then